Hi, and welcome to Crafts by Two. I'm Ken. What are you doing? For our font art series, I'm speaking through fonts. Really? Are you going to be doing this the whole series? Awesome. For our font art series, we wanted to do a little bit more with Inkscape but something that wasn't as complicated as the Coloring Book SVG series. A lot of people had talked about wanting to do sentiments or layered text, and you can't do that in Design Space yet, but with Inkscape you can. So in this series, we're going to be talking about text basics and manipulation. So in the next series, we're just going to show you a little bit about Inkscape and how to get started putting text in Inkscape and doing some basic manipulation. Then we take that for group text and that's just gonna help you make a little bit of a font art and get started with the basics. Then we're gonna show you layered text. So this is where we start getting into the cool stuff. So you can take uh, your group text and create matted layers which is something a lot of people have been wanting to be able to do. Then we're gonna show you text on a path and that's also how you can do text on a circle. So you can draw a line or a shape and put your text on that. I know a lot of people have been wanting to be able to do that in Design Space. And then we're going to wrap it up with arched text. So you can do kind of cool, kind of sports jersey kind of things. So that would be great for vinyl or iron-ons. Some of these techniques you can do in Design Space. You don't need to use Inkscape, but we build on these skills throughout the series. So some of the later techniques, like the layered text and the arch text, you do need to use those techniques in Inkscape to get the full range of what you want. So that's why we start with the basics. With all of our series, we include a handout. So don't forget, to look in the description of this video to get the link to our website so you can download the handout and the reference sheet to use to follow along. Some people complain about it's tough to follow along to the video, but we've provided reference sheets with almost all of our projects, so that way you have something to print out and follow along. Because this series builds on the techniques from the previous videos, we decided to release these all back to back, so you're going to get a video each day. So let's jump into part one, text basics and manipulation in Inkscape. Here we are in Inkscape. Before we get started with the basics, I want to cover some of the common terminology I'll be using in this demonstration. When I talk about using a tool, I mean this toolbar over on the left hand side. Common tools we'll be using in this series are the pointer tool, the node tool, and of course the text tool. And you just change tools by clicking on it in the toolbar. When I talk about a menu, I mean choosing a menu at the top of the document or at the top of your computer window. So for example, if I say go to the text menu, you'll come up here to text and click. Now let's get started. To place text in Inkscape, you use the text tool. So you come over to the toolbar on the left, click the text tool, which looks like the A with the cursor, and you'll notice my pointer changes to a plus with the A to let me know that I'm using the text tool. So all I have to do is click and type, and then my text goes into the document. This is what Inkscape calls regular text. You can also do what is called flowed text. When you have the text tool, you just click and drag, and you'll drag out a box. 
and your text will flow into this box as you type. So you'll see when I got to the edge, it wrapped. Flowed text doesn't work for a lot of the manipulation and effects we're going to be doing in this series. So you want to make sure that you're using regular text. So just a reminder, click the text tool, click where you want to type, and start typing. And that's how you do regular text. So the best part of working with fonts is you have so many different choices for font styles and moods to help with your designs. So how do you change your font face and font size in Inkscape? There's a couple of different ways. First, when you click on the text tool, up on the toolbar, you'll see it shows your font and size that you're going to use. You can click the arrow to choose your font face and a menu will pop up. If you have a lot of fonts installed on your computer, this can take a moment to load. Because if you look, after each name, there's a preview of what this font is going to look like. If you have a lot of fonts, it could take a minute or two for these previews to load. So just be patient. So I'm going to choose something a little more fun, like this Broadway font. Now when I click and type, it's using the Broadway font. To change the size, I can also just come up and click on the size menu, and it shows a menu of common font sizes. So you can just click, and your font will change to that size. If you want a size that's not on this menu, like maybe you want 15, or something bigger than 144, you can come up here and click into the font size, and type in a new size. So I deleted the 48, and I'm just going to change this to 175. When I press return, my text changes to that size. Now for the first little quirk when you're working with text in Inkscape. If you look here at the end of Broadway, you can see my cursor blinking, and generally that would lead you to believe that you can keep typing, and your text will show up there. But when you've chosen the font size, and you start typing, you might notice weird things happening on your screen. That's because you're not really typing into your text anymore. You're typing in shortcuts into Inkscape. So that's why different tools are changing as I type things on the keyboard. Another thing that might happen is if you change the font size and then you think you can keep typing, what you're typing is actually going up here into the font size instead of into your text. So if you want to change the font size and the font face, one way to avoid this is click on the text tool, make your choices, and then click in the document where you want to start typing. And then you will be at the size you chose. Another way you can change the font size and font face is through the text menu. So with the pointer tool, click on your text once to select it. You can tell it's selected because it's got this dotted line around it and these arrows. We'll talk about those arrows in a little bit on how you can use them with your fonts. But for now, just know that the dotted lines let you know that you've selected your text. Now you can come to the text menu and choose text and font. This opens up a dialog where you can change your font face and your font size. Here it's called font family and you can browse through the list by clicking or use your arrow keys to step through your fonts. Again, if you have a lot of fonts, this might take a minute or two to load the first time. Another thing you can do is type 
So here, while I have the dialog up, I can type Magneto, and all I had to do was type MA, and it jumped to my Magneto font in the list. So if you know the name of your font, that's another way you can quickly jump in the list. That's handy if you have a ton of fonts on your computer. And over to the right, you can also change the font size. So again, clicking the arrow gets me the standard list of font sizes, or you can just type into the field what font size you want to use. When you're happy with your choice, click Apply, and you can see in the background my font updated right away in the document. If you're done, you can click the Close button, or in Windows, click the red X. On the Mac, you'll have the red X over on the left. Selecting text is important, so I already pointed out that you can use the pointer tool and just click on it to select your text object. That's handy if you want to change the entire text object all at once, like we did by going to the text menu and doing text and font. With the techniques that I'm going to be showing you next, it's handy to be able to choose either an individual character, such as the letter H, or to choose a portion of the word because you only want to make a change to that one portion. You can select a portion of your text in two ways. Both of them you need the text tool, so click on your text tool if you haven't selected it already, and the first way is you can just click and drag. So if I just wanted these two P's, I click, and then while holding the mouse, drag to select just the two P's. You can also select with the keyboard. So for example, if I click between the B and the I, that's where my cursor is going to be. Now, if I hold down the Shift key, that's going to select what I use the arrows to move over. So I press the right arrow once to select I, again I get the R, and so on. And you can use the left arrow to go in the opposite direction. So let's talk about basic manipulation of your text. You'll need to type something in, so come over to your text tool if you don't have it selected already. And remember, you want regular text, so just click once and start typing. So that's not quite as big as I want it to be, or in as fun of a font. So I'm just going to select it and choose a different font face. Let's choose something big and chunky, like this Eris Bold. And let's make it big, so 144. So the first thing I'm going to show you is that you can move the characters individually. So, using our selection, I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to start with the O. So to move text, you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and then use your arrow keys. So using the arrow key, you can move it to the right, or you can move it to the left. You can also move it up and down. Holding down the Alt key, you can only move it one point at a time. So if you have to move your text really far, you're sitting there pounding on the keyboard, trying to move it a lot in one direction. So another shortcut is if you hold down the Alt key and the Shift key, when you use the arrows, you'll actually move it 10 spaces at a time. So that'll save you a lot of work if you need to move your text really far. So let's jumble this up a bit, kind of grouping things together. And you can switch between holding the Shift key and not holding the Shift key if you want to move something far with the Shift key. Or when you get it close but it's not quite right, you can still hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and let go of Shift to move it one pixel at a time so you can get things lined up just the way you want them. So now on the keyboard, I can come over and do the U. 
and holding down Alt and Shift, moving this pretty far. And I'm just going to kind of go for this stylized approach where instead of lined up on the bottom, they're lined up on the top. And again, I'm switching between the Shift key and not using the Shift key to kind of move things just a little bit. Now you can see as I do this, I'm getting this bigger gap. So each time I want to move another letter over, I have to move it further and further. So one thing you can do instead of moving one letter at a time is select everything and then move it together. So we'll again bring things in tight and I'm going to kind of group things together here so I can get one piece out of this. So now I'm done with the D. I can click and drag and move the remaining letters. And because I want to use this as a cut file, I'm kind of pushing everything together. So here I want to make sure that the dot of the eye touches the shape as well as the body. So everything can be cut out in one piece instead of having lots of little pieces. So now I'm selecting the remaining letters, bringing over the D. Now I can bring over it. And this one, I want to leave just a little bit between it to help distinguish, but they're still attached. Eh, doesn't look like I can get away with it. So let's bump up the eye a little so it's obvious that it's different. So I use the up arrow for that. So there you go. I made a just a fun little piece of word art already. So that's how you can move text around, but you can also rotate text. So I'm going to click and choose a new font. And I still want something chunky. And chunky letters work if you're moving this over towards a cut file that you want to cut the paper piece out of. Hmm. Let's try this ravy. And I want it a little bit bigger. And because I made those changes, I'm just going to click again so everything's what I want. And this is going to be crazy. So this font is already pretty crazy, and I could probably just smush it together, but I'm going to show you how you can rotate the characters now. So again, using the font tool, you can select individual characters, and now to rotate, you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and use the square brackets. And the square brackets can be found on the keyboard, usually over to the right by your Enter key and there's a left facing one and a right facing one to rotate it to the right and rotate it to the left. So just tapping it, I can rotate the text a little and you can just hold it down also to rotate it without having to just pound on the keyboard over and over. So I'm gonna just kind of twist these up a little. So let's swing the C back and another shortcut is you can do the control key and the square brackets. So holding control on the keyboard and the square bracket rotates it 90 degrees in one big chunk. So for example, if you really wanted to swing something around, instead of using the alt key and just holding it till it rotates there, hold down the control key and you can do it in bigger chunks. Now, for our Mac users, I need to let you know that the Alt Rotate doesn't work on the Mac. It only works on Windows. It's just a way that they set up the keyboard that it just doesn't recognize that the Alt key is modifying things in the way that it should. 
So, to rotate things on a Mac, or even on Windows, you can come up here to the toolbar while you have your text selected, and this last field is rotation, and you can just use the arrows to rotate your text. And you can even type in a number if you want to. So we can just rotate these and make it really crazy. So selecting each letter, we can kind of spin things around. So there, now it's even crazier. Though this font doesn't look so great because that A looks like a D. Kurdzidzi? If you were playing around with your text and you didn't like it, you can always do undo, because undo is your friend, especially in Inkscape. So you can go to the edit menu and choose undo. But each step is an undo step, and that can take quite a while. So if you just want to clean your text and start over, you can click on it once to select it with the pointer tool, and go to text, and say remove manual kerns and then your text bounces back to just the way it was when you started. So just click on it to select it, text, remove manual kerns, and it's back to the way you had it. So one more basic manipulation that you can do is to distort and resize your text. So you don't always have to use the font size to size your text. You can click on it once, and remember I told you about this dotted box to let you know it was selected? But you also get these arrows. If you want to resize your text without distorting it, you can use any of these corner arrows and hold down the control key while you click and drag that arrow, and it will keep your text sized proportionately. So if you wanted your text big, you wouldn't have to sit there and play with the font size. You can just click and drag and the same to make it smaller. So holding down the control key, you just grab one of those corner arrows and drag. You can also use these to distort. So maybe I want tall skinny letters and I like this font, but it's not tall and skinny. So I can click on it to select it and then grab one of these arrows on the side and then distort it. And you can still manipulate your text just like you did before. So I can select things and use the arrow keys with the Alt key to move things around. So that gives you a lot of different design options. So there's the basics of text in Inkscape. We showed you how you can enter text using the text tool. We showed you how you can move text using the arrow keys and the Alt key. And we showed you how you can rotate text using the Alt key and the square brackets or the toolbar at the top of the page. So as we said, you can do some of this in DesignScape, but to move ahead in this series and do some of the cooler effects that we can show you later in Inkscape, you need to know these basics so you can get the most out of using text in Inkscape. So until next time, play around and get familiar with putting text in Inkscape, moving it around, and rotating it. And in the next series, we show you how to bring it all together, literally. We hope you found this helpful, and just like all of our Inkscape videos, you really want to make sure you're comfortable with the techniques in this video before moving on to the next in the series. Just take it slow, and we know you can be successful. So thanks for watching, and remember to give our videos a thumbs up. We really appreciate your comments and your feedback on our video too. And don't forget, click show more and read the description, because we put a lot in the description of the video like the links on where to get the handout. So, until next Tuesday. That's my thing I do. That was a pretty chilly font.
Bye. At the end of the series of how you could do the group text and 